I'm John Steinbrecher, and welcome to Conversations with the Commission. Today, we're pleased to be joined with Mark Allnut, Director of Athletics at the University of Buffalo. Mark, welcome. Thanks, John. Appreciate you having me on. You're at the beginning of your second year at Buffalo. What do you know now that you didn't know a year ago? Well, you know, first and foremost is anytime you approach a new you know, opportunity, you do a lot of research on the institution, a lot of research on the conference. And, you know, the, the research that I did really didn't do justice of the, the city that, that I'm in, uh, the, the city of Buffalo, the people you know, that are there. You know, obviously, the, as I like to say, that blue collar work ethic, which we hear you know, so much you know, about it. And getting there, it was, you know, it was talked about, about you know, making you be more relevant in terms of athletics you know obviously we're competing with and necessarily competing is not the word but you know you're in a city with the, the bills with the sabers a, a pro town so to speak you know how do we elevate you know what we're doing to, to attract more of the community and you know over the past 18 months with the uh, with the success we've had you know on the on the field and in the respective courts and then you know opportunity for me to come in and really dive in deep into the community and really engage the community. I'm, I'm very pleased about not only the support that we have from the alumni, uh, the university community itself, but you know, the, com the community being able to have buy-in and understand that uh, you know, we're an important part of that community. You know, you're not that far away from having been hired there. Uh, you were senior associate at the University of Memphis, and prior to that, you're the director of athletics at uh, Southeast Missouri State, and prior to that, you're at Missouri. But okay, you're at Memphis, and someone picks up a phone and says, "Hey, might you be interested in this position?" What is the process you go through to say, "Maybe I am, maybe I'm not," but what what do you do to check it out? Well, first of all, talk to the wife. <laughs> that, 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 that's first and foremost. Uh, you know, you know, obviously have that conversation with her and, and understand that um, you know there's there's buy-in, and then after that is. Just through my experience uh, in collegiate athletics, it's it's the research that I mentioned previously, but really reaching out to to peers, uh, mentors, uh, you know, folks that have previously been at the institution. So having that conversation with Ward Manuel, who I've known now for about you know 14 years, and, and getting some insight, you know, on him um, uh, regarding the job, uh, someone like Rachel Blunt, uh, who is a SWA at Central Michigan, who we work together at uh, at. Uh, uh, at Southeast Missouri State, you know, hearing from her. So, you know, for me, it, it, I value that network and being able to, you know, be able to get that, you know, that opinion, um, you know, from those folks and, and really dive in deep. You know, obviously you want to know who you're going to be working with from a staff standpoint, but more importantly, who that president is, the, the person, my boss, and who I'm going to be, uh, you know, in the trenches with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, hearing more about uh, Dr. Satish Chapathi and, and the work he's done at UB in terms of advancing that uh, that institution at so many levels, I was very excited. But you know, I, I really do value the the input of, of folks out there in, in our industry. You were a football student athlete at the University of Missouri. Why did you pick Missouri? <laughs> well, uh, you know, for for me, I, I went to a small uh, private high school in, in Kansas City, and my my eyes were set on going to Drake University which at the time was a, a Division III liberal arts uh, college in Des Moines, Iowa. So I thought it would be an easy transition from going to a, to a small private school to, to that university. I went up there to a recruiting trip and, and enjoyed my time at, uh, at Drake. Two weeks later, and this was in December of 1990, uh, two weeks later uh, I'm in the hallways of Pembroke Hill High School and my, my college counselor, you know, she, she calls me into her office you know, with, with excitement. Uh, you know, I go in there and she tells me that I've uh, been awarded the George C. Brooks Scholarship at the University of Missouri. Well, first of all, I don't know who George C. Brooks is, but obviously for her excitement, it had to be a big deal. Uh, she's explaining it to me and to to it to me, and um, you know what it was it was an academic scholarship that you know at the time fifty five hundred dollars scholarship that covered uh, tuition, you know, room and board, books, and I even got a check back, you know, for uh, for attending Missouri. So. To me, the decision was 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 a simple one. You know, my folks, uh, you know, they worked very hard to uh, put me through a, a private education in, in high school, and for me to be able to go to, you know, a university, you know, essentially tuition free, uh, that was a no brainer. And then, you know, it's obviously about timing and everything else. Um, I played football at uh, at the high school. I wanted to continue my football career, um, and and obviously in college, uh, we had a quarterback uh, that who's a junior. 
who was being recruited nationally. And uh, University of Missouri was recruiting them. They, they saw the tape, they saw me on the tape, and then at that time, you know, they invited me to be a preferred walk-on to the, to the football program. So I ended up uh, walking on uh, the University of Missouri football team. I had an academic scholarship, and then, you know, my second year I earned a uh, football scholarship. So I was very fortunate to, uh, you know, obviously start my, uh, my collegiate career on an academic scholarship and ended uh, with a football scholarship. Linebacker and tight end, which did you prefer more, offense or defense? Well, I'll, I'll always say this. I'll, I'll always say that these hands might be, you know, pretty pretty big, but they can't catch. You know, I, they're, they're better with uh, blocking, or in this case, I'm, I'm doing like a holding gesture here, but uh, yeah, I prefer defense. I, I really did. I, I enjoyed, uh, you know, playing inside linebacker and, and commanding that defense. And, and again, that experience of being a student athlete, which I know we'll get into, is, is why I do what I, what I do right now. You know, the opportunity to, to travel to places where I never thought I'd go. Uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, College Station, Texas, uh, Boulder, Colorado. I go on and on. You know, having those opportunities to travel and, and be a part of those environments of com camaraderie, you know, with your teammates, the relationships that are formed, not just with your teammates, but with uh, your, your coaching staff, with your support staff, administrators, is, is something to me that after I graduated, uh, you know, I went back to Kansas City, worked in the, uh, you know, private industry for a little bit, but, you know, made the determination I wanted to get into collegiate athletics. Did you have a mentor at Missouri? Yeah, my, my mentor, good friend, is, is Mike Alden. Uh, he, he's the one, and people might have heard the term out there, Alden's Army. Uh, uh, you know, obviously there's a few of us out there in the industry right now who are sitting in Division I athletic directors. And for him, uh, it was a relationship that began early when I was on the football side of things. I started my career as a graduate assistant within the football program and then you know, transitioned to the director of football operations. and. Um, he had his eye on me early on in my career, and he, he told me that one day he was going to recruit me over to administration. And I remember that day that he did. Uh, another mentor, good friend of mine on the football side was Gary Pinkle, who was the head football coach in Missouri. And I remember telling, uh, you know, a football coach that hey, I'm going over to administration, and uh, you know, his his first response was, "Hey, I'm proud of you, but you know, you're going over to the dark side." <laughs> and I was a little chuckled there, but you know, Mike, you know, saw something in me, and and like he did with a lot of folks that he's mentored. And really gave me the opportunity to expand, uh, you know, my administrative role. Uh, you know, being in uh, uh, director of football operations, it, it's more of the internal operations, uh, so to speak. But you know, he, he put me in positions to to learn the external side of things as well, which I which proved very very beneficial. And you know, even moving forward, even when I left Missouri at at CMO at Memphis, and even now at Buffalo, you know, we have the opportunity to you know, chat back and forth. But he was the primary one, and, the, and there's others too. You know, when, you, when you're in this situation, you meet people and, and you study up on people and, and you see, you know, the successes that they're having and maybe the challenges that they're having. Um, you know, it's always good to, to have those, uh, those folks out there as a lot of times just as a sounding board in terms of what you're going through because there are some times where I'm not going to have all the answers. <laughs> and it, it's good to reach out to those folks. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Mike Alden and what, what, what struck me in, in going back over your history is I made a note, you're coming out of the Mike Alden tree. You know, we've got, there's three, four, five people in this industry that kind of have these trees of folk. You know, you think about a Kevin White, you think about a Gene Smith, you think about a Mike Alden, and you can clearly track a number of people from there. Given that, do you feel a sense of responsibility or do you do things a certain way now as a lead administrator with regard to your staff mm -hmm. because of that? Well, yes. I mean, case in point is that, that servant leadership. You know, and, and Mike really, uh, you know, put that, uh, you know, really was a shining example of, of what that is and what, that's, what that should be. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, being in, a, being in the position that I am is, I'm not going to have all the answers. I'm not going to be that, uh, that dictator of the table, you know, slamming my fist on the, on, on the, on the, on the table saying, hey, we're going to do it this way. You know, I want to empower you know, our folks and, and also hold them in, accountable. But when you, when you do that, as he did that with us, you know, there, there's more of a sense of attachment. There's more of a sense of, of an opportunity to, to really provide great value into the organization. And for me, part of that is developing, you know, our, our staff. So I'm, I'm the first person that I want to look for opportunities that I see fit for a, for a staff member. I, I, I'll bring up the name right now, Katie Bird, for example. She's our assistant AD for business operations. She's at, the, at uh, Cal's you know, right now. You know, she's been at other development type, professional uh, development opportunities just to be able to hone her craft, 
so to speak, so she can again bring value to her organization, but also for her to meet folks in the industry because she's going to be a superstar and, and one of these days she's going to have an opportunity to do that. So being able to connect folks I think is very important, but also be able to you know, assign folks their, their various job responsibilities and, and let them be able to take it to a whole new level. And again, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about the value they bring to the organization, how we can all together continue to, um, you know, continue the great trajectory that we're on at, at UB. You're one of, what, 14 African-American directors mm -hmm. of athletics at the football bowl subdivision level. Does that bring, uh, do, you, do you feel a sense of responsibility because of that, fairly or unfairly? No, I, I do. <coughs> and, and, and part of that is, you know, one, one aspect that you know, we didn't chat about earlier on is when I said I want to get it back into athletics, you know, my initial thought was I wanted to get into coaching. You know, I wanted to become a coach because I had some, some coaches of, of uh, you know, African-American coaches coming up that, you know, I felt that this was going to be my next step. There wasn't too many ADs uh, back then, and, and especially, you know, again, not single out Missouri, you know, there was not an African-American um, um, in the executive team at Missouri at the time. So for me, it was, I wanted to get into coaching. And when I started my career and, and fell in love with the administrative side of things, you know, that was the route that I wanted to go. But as I was as a young person, reaching out to people and asking them questions or introducing myself to, to folks at, you know, various conferences, you know, I want to do the same thing. And, and I do this, I, should, I want to, I, I do the same thing. Uh, you know, my, my door is always open. Um, my emails always, um, always answer the emails that people send out to me. If they just want to chat, you know, for, you know, 30 minutes, sometimes, sometimes an hour, and, and l let me give them advice on their career path, or they might ask me questions in terms of, you know, what it takes or what have you. So, to me, it's, it's a huge responsibility, a huge responsibility, and it's fair, a fair responsibility that, that I have to be able to, to give back to the younger folks that are coming up, but also understand that, you know, as being one of 14, it's something that I take great, great pride in. I want to see that number to continue to grow, and I want to, be able to show folks of the next, you know, generation of folks that are coming up is that, you know what, there is that path to become AD. And then that number is going to be able to increase because of the work that, you know, I'm doing, Sean Frazier's doing, Alan Green's doing, you can, you can go on, Ward Manuel, you can go on and on and name all the names of the folks who are in that role. Let's go back a year. You've got a basketball program that was coming off, a trip to the NCAA tournament the year before, had some success preseason favorites, nationally ranked basically the whole season. You're doing well, you know you've got a coach that's hot and there's gonna be a lot of interest in and around that coach. What do you do to prepare yourself for, his, for if that coach departs? Well, you, you, know, you have to have open and honest conversations with that coach in, in any sports and, and, and realize the fact that you know the name is gonna be circulated, the, the, he's gonna be, he or she's gonna be out there. You know have those conversations, but also you have to have action. Um, you know, do something that, that make them feel appreciated where, where they're at. Uh, just, just harking back to, you know, the situation with, with Nate Oates. I uh, was able to have those conversations, be in a position to, you know, give him a contract, a new, a new contract, which, gosh, he was, he was greatly appreciative, you know, of that, of that fact, but also the same token. You know, we were open and honest with each other and understanding that, Mark, you know, appreciate everything you've done here to, to put me in a position of, um, of where I will stand from a salary standpoint within the MAC, but also we understand that, you know, we, we can't compete with, with the Power Five institutions, you know, that, that are out there. So, first of all, make the coach feel appreciated at, at UB, and then, you know, whatever happens, happens, but also the same token. You have to, you know, put in a plan and understand what that plan is. And again, not midway through the season or near the, the MAC championship. I mean, you have to, you know, obviously anticipate that, that this is gonna happen. So, you know, what's next? People talk about a short list. People talk about, okay, um, you know, who's that search firm that might be on the phone call? You know, being able to think about those things. So when you do get a call, as I, as I did that, that Sunday, <laughs> coming back from Tulsa from the NCAA championship, okay, it's not a time for panic. You know, you, you understand that, but okay. You know, here's where the next steps are. 
you know, you know, obviously, um, you know, agree to, to allow Nate in this case to, to interview and and you know, be in close communication with him, which which he was throughout the entire time. So, when that does happen, all right, we can execute the next steps. And 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 again, it's not just a one man show. Mark Allen is doing this, this, this. You know, I want to be in lockstep with with Dr. Tripathi, so that that he understands. And then I'll bring in a you know a small group of folks to be able to help you know with that search process moving forward. Did you use a search firm as you went through your process? Y yes, I did. And. How do you, wh why do you use a search firm? How do you use them to assist you? You know, I, I and again, just, just been through this a few times, um, you know, starting, going back to the times I assisted Mike Alden at, at Missouri and SEMO Memphis. You know, there, there are times that you utilize them, sometimes you don't. And in this case, I wanted to cast a, a wide net. You know, obviously I had some names that, you know, that I thought, including Jim, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, obviously uh, Jim White is our head coach now, but you know, the, the stature of our program and, and where we were and where we are, I should say, at the time, you know, it, it made me think that, you know, I have some folks out there that I feel can, can do the job and do a great job, but it, are there other folks out there that I'm missing? So in utilizing that search firm and again, going back to relationships, going back to talking to your peers about people that might be out there, uh, you know, we were able to come up with a list uh, of folks that we felt would be an outstanding candidate uh, here at UB. And then you just go through that, that process. You know, you, you, you bet everybody out and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, feel very comfortable and excited, you know, what, uh, what Jim can bring to the table. You have a son who's now a freshman <laughs> student athlete uh, playing football at Southeast Missouri State. What, what did you learn from watching him go through the recruiting process and trying to make decisions and now as he's in his first year and the uh, inevitable struggles that any fresh, whether they're a student athlete or not, is going to have, yeah. he's away from home yeah. and he's, he's got classes, he's got ball, all these sorts of things. Yeah. Well, you know, as I mentioned, that, that original, the first question you ask about the, the thought process about, about Buffalo, well, first of all, you know, uh, my wife and I have to have that, that conversation you know, in terms of, you know, our, our comfort level and understanding that, you know, he's a, he's a young adult and he's going to make those decisions. But, you know, just to, just to ensure that we're going to be supportive of whatever, you know, decision comes about. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I spent a year, oh, close to 14 months away from the family. And, uh, you know, I had high hopes of, of him, you know, come up to New York and, and going to the institution somewhat close. But, you know, he made that decision to go to SEMO. So, so for me, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting role that I'm in, uh, you know, being in this profession for over 20 years. And, but then also being a parent, you know, being able to sit back and, and, and be able to, you know, give him advice, you know, through and through in terms of his journey. Uh, being able to, you know, understand that, you know, he's going to have that bout of homesickness. You know, we, we deal with that a lot on our, on our campuses. You know, uh, how, how I guide him through that, how his mom guides him through that is, is, is very important to us. So um, I put my dad hat on, you know, number, number one, and, and then the AD hat just when I want to help, you know, guide him through the, guide him through the process. But it's been, it's, it's, it's been good to, to be able to go through that. And, you know, um, I'll, have, I'll have three more after him. <laughs> <laughs> that I have to, you know, go through that same process. But it's, uh, it's been a good ride so far, and I'm very proud of what he's been able to achieve in a short period of time. Throughout your career, you've been active in NCA committee work, mm -hmm. uh, Minority Opportunities and Interest Committee, Gymnastics yes. Committee. I'm trying to envision you on the gymnastics floor, <laughs> by the way. Um, currently, you're the Mid-American Conference's representative on the Football Oversight Committee. Yes. What do you do to prepare for those meetings? Well, you know, obviously, it's, it's I, I look at it as an opportunity, not just for Mark on that. It's an opportunity for the institution that I'm representing, but also the conference that, that we're within. And when those opportunities come up, you know, obviously, it has to be an interest of, of mine. So you, you, you kind of threw it back at me about trying to envision me in, in, in gymnastics on the floor beam or, or what have you. You know, for me, that situation was one where I had sport oversight of women's gymnastics at the University of Missouri. And that, that opening, um, that, that position became open and they reached out to me. That was probably, you know, the greatest thing I could have ever done because for me it gave me even more of an understanding of that sport. Um, you know, the championship process. Um, it's all about the student athlete and, and trying to increase their experience and how we can do that through that championship process. So, you know, I learned a great deal, but more importantly, uh, the coaches, you know, in that room, you know, they, they had a tremendous amount of respect, you know, for me because here they are, they say, hey, a former football guy, 
that's really digging in deep, you know, to their to their sport. So that that was one, you know, that was a, the committee that I enjoyed being on. As we move forward with the other committees, you know, obviously, as you know, you get the you get the materials, um, you know, prehand. You, you study them, you look at it, you know. Obviously, it form your your thoughts, your your opinions on them, and and really want to be engaged in the discussion that's around the table. But you know, from a football oversight committee, um, you know, the great thing about that is, um, you know, I have Lance Leipold, you know, in the in, in the building, you know, across the street at UB Stadium, where you know I'll share some things with him to get his thoughts. Because again, you have the administrator lens where you might be looking at a you know, a situation, but then also I want to get his insight as a head coach. You know, is there anything that, that I'm missing here? Is there anything that, you know, you might feel that, you know, maybe we should look at like this? And again, I, I know there's some confidential matter, confidentiality that, that we discussed, so we really don't dig into that uh, overall for, in terms of specifics, but, but general. And it's always good to hear his thoughts, so that even makes me more prepared when I'm at that table in Indianapolis. Mark, thank you for your time. John, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Conversations with the Commission.